This is the Franchise Consultant Podcast. Each Monday, we release a new episode hosted by Adam Goldman. Adam has over 10 years of franchising experience, and he's worked hard to realize his dreams by being his own boss. His experience will help you to become a better business owner and franchisee so that you can live your best life and control your destiny. This is the Franchise Consultant Podcast, and this is Adam Goldman. Welcome to another edition of the Franchise Consultant Podcast. I'm here with Shirley Kefkin with Fran Fun. So excited to see you, to uh, visit with you today, Shirley. Yeah, thanks so much for having me here, Adam. I always love talking about franchising and funding, so I appreciate the opportunity to be here. So you've been in franchising for a long time, haven't you? I have, actually. On May 1st, just a few days from now, I will be celebrating my 20-year anniversary in franchising. Wow. Wow. And walk me through and walk our listeners through uh, what kind of experience you have in the franchising industry. And what sure. You- yeah. So about 20 years ago now, um, I was living in Lansing, Michigan. That's my hometown. And there is a franchise headquartered there called Two Men and a Truck. It's a a moving company. And I happened to sort of fall into franchising through beginning my work as an employee of Two Men and a Truck at their corporate office. Uh, Within just a couple of months of joining their team, uh, they actually put me into a franchise sales and development role. And while at the time it wasn't necessarily where I saw myself long term, I could not be more grateful that that's where I've landed uh, because I think without them putting me in that role, I would not have had the opportunity to learn how much I really do love this world. So I spent about eight years with two men in a truck in franchise sales and development. Um, They were very big into just education. And so I was able to earn my certified franchise executive designation through the International Franchise Association at my time at two men in a truck. But like a lot of people from Michigan, I did finally get sick of the snow. So in 2008, I actually made my way out to Arizona in the Phoenix area. And when I got here, I started working for a senior care franchise, again, in in franchise sales and development. Uh, But with that franchise system, our franchisees would hire caregivers to then go into the homes of seniors and kind of help them with daily living. So I was with Uh, that company for about five years. And through my experience there, I actually really got to know Fran Fund as an organization because probably 85 to 90% of the folks that I helped to join that franchise system used Fran Fund's assistance on the funding side. So when it was time for me to sort of make a move, I reached out to the owners of Fran Fund and, you know, just said, "I've, I've enjoyed getting to know you and I would love to kind of dip my toe in the water on the funding side. Do you think you have any room for me or availability to talk it through? And so, you know, a little over seven years later, here we are. And it's really been a great experience with Fran Fund. That's great. And if for our listeners that aren't familiar with Fran Fund, what does Fran Fund do? So as our name sort of indicates, we really specialize in franchise funding options. So our number one priority is to help folks to identify solid funding strategies to really help them meet that goal of business ownership. And then once they've selected the franchise that's the right fit for them, our next step is to really help them execute on those strategies. We primarily focus in two areas. One of the things that we do is facilitate the SBA loan process. So while we are not a bank or a direct lending institution, My team does have about a 99% success rate in terms of obtaining loans for folks that we've provided a pre-approval letter to. And then on the other side of the house, we facilitate an IRS program called the Rollover for Business Startup, or you'll see the acronym ROBS, R-O-B-S, thank the IRS for that one. Um, But what that program allows folks to do is access money that they've saved maybe in a 401 or an IRA that they've rolled retirement dollars into. And that program allows you to invest that money directly into your own small business without having to pay income taxes or early withdrawal penalties for touching those funds. So we really spend our time helping folks navigate the waters with both of those programs. 
That's great. And so for our listeners that don't really understand this, can someone take their money from a 401k uh, that is investing that 401k in the stock market, which by the way, these days isn't particularly safe or secure or stable. And then can they invest in themselves and invest in a franchise business without penalty? They can. Yes. And, you know, a lot of financial advisors are not aware of this program. So sometimes, you know, when folks go to get some third party feedback, they may hear, hey, that's not possible. That's not how retirement plans work. But with this Rob's program, this rollover for business startup, I would, I would say that it's similar to having an IRA, maybe with $100,000 that's been invested in Sony and Best Buy and Home Depot stock. With this strategy, you have the ability to take that $100,000 off of the market and instead, through a 401k plan, invest the money directly into the stock of your own small business. And you know, what you're essentially doing there is you're saying, hey, I've done my homework, I've done my research, I think that I have found a business that I can enjoy some success in, and if I were to take some of this money and invest it into my own business, I believe that I'm going to get a return that is just as good as, if not better than, what the market might do over the same period of time. You're investing in yourself. That's exactly it. That's exactly what this gives you the ability to do. That's, that's really, really cool. I'm going to switch gears for a second, Shirley. I've known you for a while now, and I think you have one of the most interesting stories I've ever heard. If you could share that, you know which one I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I, as I mentioned earlier, I live in uh, Tempe, Arizona. I'm in the Phoenix area. And, you know, we're a desert. So that's kind of our landscape. And as some of you may or may not be aware, one of our um, prominent critters in the desert is a scorpion. So a couple of years ago, I was actually getting ready to uh, hop on a plane and attend a conference. I was supposed to be meeting Adam and some colleagues at a conference. And as I was brushing my teeth, I was in my bathroom, I stepped down and thought that I had put a shard of glass through my foot. I couldn't figure out what I possibly could have stepped on. And it turns out that it was a scorpion. So, you know, I thought, hey, no big deal. We'll just go to good old Google and Google will tell me how to deal with a scorpion sting. So I did the icing and the elevating and all the things they recommend. But I, I think I had a, a pretty severe sting since I had been standing on it. So it was kind of giving me everything it had. And all of a sudden, my feet are numb. And then my hands are numb. And then my throat is numb. And I can't drink anything. And so, you know, finally decide like, hey, we should probably get this checked out. Um, and I hopped in an Uber to get myself to the hospital. And by that time, my eyes actually started shaking. These were all symptoms of scorpion stings that I was not aware. Google did not prepare me for this activity. Um, <laughs> so that was definitely a pretty crazy, I don't know, 48-hour adventure when it was all said and done. <laughs> but I wow. unfortunately had to miss the conference. But luckily, I'm still here to tell the story. Oh my gosh, that's a crazy story. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yes, I am I'm grateful that it has not happened since. Um, you know, we did a whole sealing service in my home so that hopefully these guys can't get in again. Um, and I'll knock on wood, but so far so good <laughs> since that. Not incident. a lot of scorpions in Michigan, are there? No, you know, that, that they should probably put that on their advertisements. <laughs> no scorpions. So funny, so funny. And look, I mean, what I found in the marketplace is that things have changed a lot in the past 90 days or so. Um, if you could just share with our listeners what you've seen that, have cha uh, that has changed in the landscape when it comes to the market for SBAs in general and just in general and funding for franchises. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think a lot of folks out there are sort of paying attention to what's been going on just, you know, in the world and specifically in our country and are probably familiar with the CARES Act that was passed uh, just about a month ago, on March 27th. Uh, the CARES Act was primarily focused on providing dollars and relief to existing business owners who, you know, may be going through some challenging times um, with some of the social distancing protocols that are out there. The one nice benefit that has sort of rolled into new loans for folks is if an SBA loan closes by September 27th, so that's six months from when the CARES Act went into place, 
And again, the loan has to close. So this is not just about approval or application times. But if the loan closes by September 27th, the federal government, the Small Business Administration will be making the first six months worth of payment. And, you know, that's all real money, right? So that's, that's definitely been one nice benefit that we've seen for, for new loans. Um, one other thing that I think we've seen just sort of as a result of interest rates dropping in general is that, you know, if you and I had been talking, had been talking a few months ago and we were talking about interest rates for SBA loans, we probably would have been talking seven, seven and a half area, something in that range. Right now, we are looking at interest rates more in the 6% area. So while that's higher than a mortgage, you know, which is what a lot of folks are used to, it's actually really low for SBA lending. So that, that's been a nice sort of side benefit too. That's great. And so the six months, it's forgivable. So for instance, if someone has a 10-year loan, right, that would be $1 million, and they would in effect get a 5% discount or $50,000 back from the federal government. Well, and you know, it's almost better than that because the federal government is actually just stepping in and making the payment. So wow. it's not that the borrower has to make a payment and then file for some sort of reimbursement or anything along those lines. It's also not a deferral where they're just tapping it onto the back end. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you're right from a dollar's perspective that that is a huge benefit, but even just for ease of utilizing this benefit, they, they have made it very easy for folks. Very interesting. So what kind of shift have you seen in your candidates? You deal with a lot of candidates. What, what's going on with them? What kind of franchises are they interested in? Has that change over the past 60 or 90 days? Well, you know, I think that whether we all wanted it or expected it or maybe needed it and we didn't know it or not, you know, there have been a lot of people out there that have had some time sort of thrown their way in the last month, month and a half here. And I think that one of the things that that has given folks the room to do is really explore, what do I want my future to look like? You know, how long do I want to keep working for someone else? Where do I think I might be able to find some success outside of the career that, you know, I'm used to and that, that I've been in for the last five, 10, 15 years. So I think it's interesting because sometimes folks don't necessarily expect a lot of movement with, you know, new business ownership and a time where maybe things feel uncertain. But again, I think that because I've been given that time, there are a lot of people out there taking advantage of it and sort of figuring out what comes next, whether that is, you know, thinking of maybe maintaining that job in corporate America and potentially sort of starting something on the side or really making a move out of, you know, their full-time role at the job they're in now to focus on something that, may not just bring financial success, but also just could be more fulfilling to them personally. So yeah, you know, we're, we're talking with a lot of people who maybe weren't considering this a month and a half ago, but I've really been given the time to figure out if it could be a good idea. So it, it's been really interesting. And what do you think? I mean, would you say that with, the, with your candidates that you're talking to, would you say they're more reflective now or they have more time to research? And because of that, they might be choosing different options than they would have before? I mean, which sectors are you finding that are particularly hot right now? You know, I would say that, I mean, at Frame Fund, we work with hundreds of franchise organizations. So we still are seeing a pretty steady mix of, you know, home-based, service-based businesses versus things like preschools or um, gyms. Now, obviously, preschools and gyms are not open right this second. So um, there's going to be some time involved before they get open. But I mean, I think like much of the rest of the country, most folks out there are seeing this as sort of a, a temporary situation. And while it's temporary, you know, I think you certainly are seeing some folks saying, hey, maybe I do want to look at a business that I know could continue to be open through any social distancing protocols that might come into play. Where I think, you know, on the other side of it, we're seeing just some innovation and some difference in, you know, business plans and marketing ideas and ways to get, you know, goods and services out to consumers. We're seeing a lot of franchisors sort of innovate on that side, um, which again, I think is, you know, still keeping people confident, whether it is more of a, a home-based service-based business versus something that, you know, might need more of a, a brick and mortar location-based facility. So I'm going to switch gears here again. You've been set for about eight years? Uh, Brand Fund, I've been here for about seven years, yeah. 
What is the biggest success story you've seen in the past seven years when it comes to a franchising? You know, I think the biggest success story for me is a franchise organization that is growing rapidly, right? And still at a controlled pace that works for them. And that growth is not just happening in the number of locations sold, but also in the number of locations open. You know, I think that that's always very encouraging. And also just, you know, being sort of in this seat that I'm in at Fan Fund, where my job day in and day out is to work directly with potential business owners and help them put their strategies together, help them make sure that they're, you know, crossing all of their T's and dotting all of their I's and that they've explored every angle. I work with a lot of folks who maybe I helped them to open their first franchise back in 2013 when I joined Fran Fund, but now we're on location five, six, seven, eight. And so that for me, you know, those are really nice success stories too. Just, um, you know, that people are having good experiences and just continuing to grow. Is there one that really sticks out for you when it comes to franchise business owners? You're like, wow, this person's done great. Yeah, I mean, I think there was a gentleman that I worked with, again, back in 2013 that comes to mind, and he started out, he left his job, he was working full time, he left his job to start a service-based sort of coaching business, and that went well, and then he came back and said, hey, I think that I'm ready for round two, and this time around, I want to look at something that doesn't rely on me so heavily, so now I'm open to having employees, you know, maybe more of a location-based business. And he ended up opening a couple of hair salons and then came back again and said, hey, that's been really good. Franchising is treating me well. I like what I'm doing here. Now I think I would like to get into the fitness arena. And so, you know, again, that for me is really exciting. Not just that he has multiple businesses, but just that he's been able to find such a place in franchising, you know, and and different opportunities have caught his attention and have brought him success. Um, So that has really been a long time. That's great. What a great story. I like that very much. In your experience, what's the mistake that people make the most? or What's the biggest mistake for people that are looking to finance their franchise at the beginning? I think the mistake that people make is assuming that, oh, well, I've gotten a mortgage before and it was pretty easy. I should be fine. Um, just making that assumption before getting into a pre-approval process. And that's not to say that things would not be fine. But from my perspective, the last place where you really want to make assumptions in your decision-making process is on the financing side. It's really important that not only do you have options available to you, but that these options are options that you are educated about, that you are comfortable with, um, that you are confident utilizing in order to get that business open. So I'll have a lot of people say, oh, you know what? I haven't picked out a franchise yet. I'm not positive if I'm going to do this yet. Why don't we hold off on the funding conversation? And for me, I think that having that conversation earlier than later just gives folks another data point to work with. And it doesn't mean you're committing to anything, but for me, you know, there's no too early to start to think about funding. Thank you so much, Shirley. And if people want to get a hold of you, how do they go ahead and get a hold of you? So there are several ways that you can find me. One, reach out to Adam. He has all of my contact information and can definitely get us connected to have a more detailed conversation about what might work for you. Um, You also can visit our website, franfund.com. So kind of franchise funding shortened, franfund.com. And there's a section there where you can request more information. My name is Shirley Kefchen. You can pick that from the drop-down menu that you'll be uh, you know, I'll ask if you've spoken with anyone at Fran Fund. You can pick my name there, and that'll get us connected directly. Thank you so much for your time today, Shirley. As always, really nice talking to you. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It was really great to be here. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Franchise Consultant Podcast. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from this show. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, give us a rating, and leave a comment on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Explore great resources on our website, franchisecoach.net. And if you'd like more content regularly, follow us on LinkedIn or Facebook. And hey, be sure to listen next time so you're able to realize your dreams.